sword that doesn't You have a man usually! Okay, kids, new rule. You're all forbidden from making dick jokes in the comments. Nah, I'm just kidding. Bang him out with your wang out. This channel is precariously teetering on the edge of being a postal channel, so let's fix that right now. No pain, no gain. Haha. <laughs> Low wang come for you, little snake coward. Where we left off, Low wang had murdered hundreds of ninjas and had just scared away a giant snake creature. Luck is with you, Low wang. Hey! Come back here and finish, Mike! Ogre is scary, snake shit face! In the first level, you're just... Roll, roll, uh, roll, roll, roll your boat! Sinter is down to the stream! Oh, I that. think my thingy hanging out! <laughs> this part sucks. It's not a good way to start off an episode. You're stuck on this boat until it hits this whirlpool. Getting shot by every hit scanner in the area until the game decides you can leave. But you don't want to go this way here. This hole that opened up? Because it's a secret, and if you want to beat this, it's not optional. You're back to square one in terms of weapons, so you need missiles and grenades. In fact, explosives are priority one. You get all the new weapons in this episode, but you need those explosives because this game is done treating you like a baby. You better be able to snatch the pebble, kids, because we ventured into the more sadistic parts of this game, where those shadow ninjas from before come two at a time and... Well, you'll see. The bees are bad enough. You see this mounted gun? Well, you see that blocky thing from 1997 that's supposed to represent a mounted gun? Get on that shit because there's a dozen ninjas waiting for you. In this level, you get the railgun, or at least you should. It's in a secret behind this waterfall. Time to get a list! <laughs> it's not the best. It handles weird. You have to shoot a little to the left of the crosshair. The railgun is actually useful for coolie ghosts. It's one hit. Everything else usually takes two or three. I wish it was like the Quake 2 railgun. The Quake 2 railgun is perfect. It's not as powerful as, say, a rocket to the face. At the end of the level, you catch up to the giant snake boss and you get to kill him for real. And since this is the hardest difficulty, he's got a couple of mama rippers with him. So we soften them up with a nuke. That's what you get for making Lo Wang chase you! It'll usually take one of them down, but once they've felt a little nuclear holocaust, they're more receptive to death going forward. I use the grenade launcher a lot, and I'll tell you why. A grenade hit isn't as damaging as a rocket, but the splash damage is ridiculous. So even if you miss the target, you're still gonna hurt them. And you, probably. But just a little. It's called no pain, no gain for a reason. I didn't talk about these red skulls before. They're called accursed heads. In this case, they float all around the serpent god. That's what he's called in the manual. And it says that he launches them at you at different times. They're his worst attack, and they can easily kill you. They're somewhat related to the red skull head mines and traps, but... We'll get to those, don't worry. Turns out most of the levels from here on out have 100 plus monsters in them. 118 in the first one, and I missed some. I actually skipped most of the killer fish because it's a waste of ammo. If you move fast enough, they're a non-issue. Next level is Killing Fields, and we're back to starting with a face full of ninja before you even have a chance to save. You get introduced to the baby rippers here. So they can deal a lot of damage, and they hang on walls and ceilings, but for the most part, you can deal with them really quickly. I want to talk about a dumb thing people say on the internet, a stupid, stupid thing cooked up from the brains of sad and terrible people who will all die alone, which is that old-school shooters like Shadow Warrior require you to memorize enemy placement to play well. That's bullshit. I don't remember where the hundred monsters are on this map. It's not about that. It's about walking into every room expecting it to be full of monsters because this isn't Dear Esther. Your life is between zero and two seconds from ending at any given time when you walk into a room in Shadow Warrior. So here's a strategy I've developed that you're going to see a lot of, which is shooting grenades into the next area because you can hear the monsters. And really, it's good to be sure. You don't have infinite nukes, so we save them for special occasions. <laughs> it is Monday Bombs away! <laughs> The number of monsters is a little ridiculous now, but god damn it, it should be. The monsters aren't very smart, it's 1997 for Christ's sake, but they're tenacious, and they'll come after you even if they might overshoot it a little. So aside from enemies, you have traps, and not like, oh no, the ceiling's gonna fall and crush me kind of traps. I mean instant death traps. It would be nice to memorize the placement of these, but they make this sound. 
But oh boy, I had fun with this one in Killing Fields. See, I accidentally jumped over this wall and set it off and was back at the level start with jack shit before I even knew something had gone wrong. You shouldn't even stand on top of this wall. You need to detect the trap and use it against your enemies like so. See that? That's eight fucking grenades. They're just like yours with absurd splash damage and range, but we just ninja strafe jumped over this wall, set it off, and made the rippers deal with the fallout. And I sent one extra grenade in, you know, just in case. Problem solved. That key exits the level, and if you were trigger happy enough earlier, you already cleared this room out. Now on to Harikari Harbor, and it ain't called that for nothing. This one's a bitch. Here's the best demonstration of how in old FPS games you had to switch weapons constantly if you wanted to win and not get wrecked every five seconds. You look like a stupid! It is natural to die. You aren't 30 seconds in before you get to dick a shadow ninja placement. I'm just like, what are all these explosions I'm hearing? They're the shadow ninja on the far side of the map that's launching his magical fuck you one hit attack. Now you could go over there and get close to him to kill him. However, it is natural to die. Holy shit. There's a grenade launching ninja you might ignore because of that shadow ninja. Because he can't shoot a grenade this far, right? So let me toss a sticky bomb at these explosive barrels- Oh, what the fuck? Oh, right, there's a guy over there shooting heat-seeking missiles at you. Hey, thanks, Randy. This isn't even Randy's map, I'm just fucking with you. So kill him, too. Just kill everything, always, everywhere. You'll do fine. More and more you'll see these green bastards, Guardians. They shoot deadly fire from their face and take two rockets, but they drop a weapon, the Guardian head, and while it doesn't let you do that fire eye attack, it does do this one that the Shadow Ninja has, which is way better. Are you ready to move? It can also place a protective fire shield around you. I find it slightly less practical than the explosive weapons, but I do use the primary fire because it burns enemies. Good stuff. You also want to look out for these female ninjas. They shoot arrows and toss sticky bombs. They don't have a lot of health, but they will screw you over if they toss enough of these bombs. Sticky bombs can act like proximity mines, and you will need to shoot them before getting anywhere near them. So here's where I show you why I don't do live voiceovers, because just look at this shit. You try talking while playing this. Once you get the key in this level, the whole place fills with monsters again, so overkill seems like the best solution. But let's get everybody on their marks first. Step right up, step right up, folks, you're about to see fireworks like you've never seen before. They're gonna blow you away, they're gonna knock you dead, they're gonna atomize your entire body in radioactive hellfire. Everybody did. I like that. They're still not all dead. There's not much to talk about in the next level. It's mostly explosions, just gratuitous grenade usage. Oh, you little tiny dick. I mean, the exit room has five ninjas in it, all of them with heat seekers. You look like a stupid. Next, you've got Raider of the Lost Wang. That's what it's called. It's another ancient temple map so stuffed to the brim with deadly monsters, it's a wonder anyone does this by choice. Who put this Shadow Ninja in this little corner where you're never gonna see him while you're entering this cave? Randy? Did you do that, Randy? Because if you moved him up a little, he'd be able to register you as a target, and then you wouldn't be able to kill him so easily. Just think. You could change one tiny, minute little error. Probably just one little thing. And it would work as intended. Oh shit, this map wasn't Randy Pitchford. Still, though, 
Now that we've thrown enemy balance out the window, here's two mini serpents to brighten your day. No cursed heads this time, but two at once, plus the assholes upstairs shooting at you. That's not fun. <laughs> I like that. Neat little underwater section here. No, 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 no. That room's a little too hot right now. You know what would help? <laughs> so here's the exit. You're thinking, Civvy, aren't you going to do the secret level? And what is this show called? Of course we're doing the secret level. Shanghai Shipwreck, surprisingly close to Harry Carry Harbor, despite the, uh... Yeah, never mind. It's not really an interesting secret level, you know, unless you count this awesome 2.5D volcano. Oh, look at that. They're still throwing gobsmacking numbers of high-level monsters at you, so... Revenge is dish best served. Raw. Fucking raw! The exit to this level is a trap. Only one of these exits, it's this one. I already know it's this one, I've been playing this game for 20 years. It's this one. The others release Guardians and I'd show you footage of that, but the point of this is to not fuck up. <laughs> Last level of this section, Sumo Sky Palace, where we welcome Randy Pitchford back, in whatever capacity, for the worst level in the game. I fucking hate it. You got dumb Switch puzzles that waste your time, you got ugly, nasty, mean-spirited traps, like this one here, where you walk off a ladder and hey, there you go. Good shit, right? Crushing walls, revolving doors of death, tight spaces not suited for exploding everything, and the lead-up to the boss is some extra strength bullshit. You have to jump over these platforms to get over here, and regardless of whether you fall too far or not, you take damage. You take damage on the platforms that aren't actually in the lava. I mean, that's scientifically accurate, but what fucking game is this? Then there's this room. You'd better know that you have to go up to these little holes and press the use key to close a tiny door over them, or else you hit this switch, this switch, which is necessary to progress, it fires two rockets at you and you're dead. And if you're not dead, you're still taking damage all the way to the portal you just opened that takes you to the boss. Hey, you look like you need a He sets you on fire. He launches explosive heads at you. He stomps the ground. Nuke his ass first, not that it does a ton of damage, but because he fucking deserves it. Guardian Head is good, but on this scale, bosses have an outrageous amount of health and usually can't kill you as fast as a Shadow Ninja. Once you beat him, he farts toxic gas. Once that's over, Lo Wang indulges in a little cannibalism. Mmm, Lo Wang kinda hungry now. No, I'm not kidding, he eats him. <laughs> Tastes like a chicken. Gross. That's it for this episode. Next time, next time it gets worse. Oh boy. <laughs>